All right, so let's take a look at the piano or um, synth layout for Adam SQ. We've covered the step sequencer prior, um, and I just want to kind of show you what SQ will look like when you're not using impact uh, and when you're using a, either a piano virtual instrument or a synth-based virtual instrument. So right out of the box, you'll see that we're in a more piano layout now, where the bottom lane here are the white keys on the piano, and the top lane are the black keys of the piano. Now you might notice that we have two blue notes here. So those represent the, the root um, of whatever scale or key that I'm in currently. Uh, by default, actually, you'll see that down here on the first pad. So pad one will usually be your root. But the nice thing about Atom SQ, and you know, there's pluses and minuses to not having keys when you're using a keyboard, but the big plus here is that we can change the layout to kind of meet our needs. So let's say, let's imagine that this was a 32 note um, keyboard controller. You know, if I was playing what I played a second ago, which was this minor chord, and I wanted to go down to B, well, I couldn't do it, right? Because there's not a B there. Um, I could go through and transpose it, but then that kind of shifts every single key. So the nice thing here is that if you select range, I can actually freely move uh, where the notes are or the cross section of the piano that I'm currently looking at. So I can give myself a ton of room here on the bottom, um, or if I need more room on the top, I can just basically shift over that, that cross section, like I said. So that's range. Um, we also have octaves right next to that. So when I select octave, it does just like you'd expect. Um, you'll also notice over here as I turn this, these buttons are changing too. So these are quick changes for your octaves. So I can hit my C, etc. Now you notice that A is a little bit different. And when I was playing earlier, I actually held this down as I did this. Uh, if I get in the right notes, hold on one second. There we go. So that's my sustain. So as I hold that down, it's gonna sustain the notes that I currently played. So A is your sustain, and then the other buttons are your quick octave changes, essentially. So that's range, that's uh, octaves, but you'll also notice that we have um, layouts, scales, and root up here at the top. And I should note that right now I'm using Studio One. I know I didn't really show it in the beginning of the video, uh, but all these are specific to Studio One. You can access a scale mode uh, outside of Studio One, whether you're using FL or Reason or uh, Logic, um, but the specific way that this is handled um, here in this mode is when you're using Studio One. So we're looking at keyboard layout right now. And let me just fix my range here so that we're looking at the same thing, um, which is your traditional standard piano layout like I talked about a little bit earlier. So that's everything is chromatic as it would be on a piano. Now, if I switch my layout over to continuous, now everything is actually laid out left to right. And as I go past 16 to 17, it picks up. Okay, and then the next mode is actually scale only mode, which I'll talk about in just a minute. But first, I'm gonna get into scales. So right now we're set to chromatic. That's why we hear every single note. Everything is possible here. Um, but when I switch, the first one that's available is major. So for those of you that are familiar with the piano, you know that C major, all the white notes are pretty much C major, as long as you start on C, right? Now, it's kind of hard to see with my lights, but um, the other black keys are still there. They're just really, really dim. So that means that you can still play, you know, quote unquote, wrong notes if you wanted to, or blue notes, as I was playing. Um, but the bright lights are there to guide you along the, the correct way. So this is major, and I can switch it over to, let's say, natural minor. Try a different one, major pentatonic. Once again, I can still play wrong notes, but um, the lights guide your way. So let's go back to major real quick. And uh, we have root. So when I select root here, notice that this is C, I'm in C major right now, 
but um, I'm actually going to go to chromatic so you can see a little bit better. So here's the entire keyboard. Select root. Now I'm going to go to C sharp. So see that those, uh, those notes have actually gone up from C up over to C sharp. Now I can go to D, D sharp or E flat, however you want to spell it in harmonically, and then go back down to um, C again. And the same thing applies whenever I go into one of these scale modes. So if I go into major, hit root, and then go up to C sharp, I can play, oops, wrong notes, sorry. If I can play correctly. So that's my um, C sharp major there. We'll switch back out here. So that's in piano mode and uh, selecting a scale, changing to that scale, and then also changing the root of the transposition as well too. Now, um, when I go into continuous mode, remember this is where everything is from left to right. Kind of the same rules apply as far as the bright and dim pads. So I'm gonna go scale, I'm gonna hit major, and now you'll see that some of the pads have dimmed, but remember now we're going left to right. So we would go, missed a note, All right? So left to right. And then uh, the last one is actually scale only. So where before we still had those possible wrong notes, when I go to scale only, um, as the name implies, I'm only gonna be able to play the correct notes. Okay, so um, yeah, for a lot of people, just switching into scale only and then changing to something like uh, maybe one of the pentatonic scales. You can do some button mashing here. And have something that sounds pretty good pretty quickly. So um, scales are super useful, especially if you're still kind of learning to get around on the piano. Um, the cool thing, though, is that, you know, we talked about the step editor before, and we didn't really get into what's known as the melodic step sequence or the, the melodic pattern editor. But if I come over here to um, Studio One, let me hide my piano window there, and I open up my editor, you'll see that the melodic mode is a little bit different than uh, the drum editor for pattern editor. So we have a few different options. But the cool thing here is that, you know, if you remember from my instrument mode, I was in C minor pentatonic with scale only selected. So when I go into editor, that's actually what's gonna be reflected. So the way that the editor works is at the top lane is where I play my notes or select my samples, depending on what um, instrument I'm using. And then the bottom lane is where I'm programming. So let's say, you know, I played maybe that C right there, that I can go through and, you know, play C's along my, my timeline here, or program C's along the timeline. Um, but the scale actually applies here. So we had that minor pentatonic, and that's what is going to um, be constrained to, what the notes are going to be constrained to uh, when we're in melodic editor. And Melodic Editor is super cool because um, we can put it in Step Record by hitting the Record button. As long as you're in Editor mode and then you hit the Record button, you'll notice that this is this Record button down here versus the uh, the main Record button down here at the bottom. When that's lit, uh, I can pretty much start playing and it's going to drop in notes at whatever resolution I currently have it set to. And just for a little reminder for those of you that haven't seen it, I can change my steps and resolution here on... Um, Atom SQ as long as I'm in editor mode. So just really quick, I'll shut that off. Select steps, uh, wrong camera, I'll switch over there, and then extend that out to maybe be 32 steps or all the way to 64, of course. Um, so, and you can change your resolution and swing and, and all that good stuff. But for now, I'm just gonna put it in record mode and I'm just gonna plop away. So it's recorded 16 steps in, so when I go back and hit play, which is pretty cool. You can come up with some interesting stuff uh, using a combination of your scale modes and then going into the uh, melodic pattern editor and then uh, either programming or just playing stuff live as well too. So a lot of different applications there. I'll undo those really quick, like so. Uh, so that's scales. And I'm going to reset everything here. We'll go there, there, there. So the next thing I wanted to show you is um, chords. So uh, this is specific to Studio One because Studio One has a note effects plugin called Quarter. And directly here on um, Atom SQ, we have the Atom, excuse me, the Add Quarter effects here in instrument mode. So um, if you go 
Back to the very beginning, this is the first page of instrument mode. You just go one over to the right, and then you'll have add quarter effects right here. So then when I come over here to uh, Studio One, hit add quarter, that plugin's gonna pop up, but now check out what happens when I play a single note. Now we're playing chords. And if you remember the um, plugin uh, preset changing system, so that's holding down shift and then turning the knob, I can actually cycle through these different note effects uh, plugins as well too. So that's the kind of default one. If I switch here, this is diatonic major chord. And some of the ones that I really like are the, um, well, there's always the EDM melody maker, right? And then I like, I like these Neo Soul ones a lot. So some great chords. Um, definitely one of the more underrated plugins in Studio One. And don't forget that you can always go into learn mode here and then program your own chords out. So maybe you um, have gone online and you've looked at some videos of some great R&B chord progressions, etc. You can go through and program them, program them here in quarter and then have them as a preset that you can quickly get to uh, to get you started on your songs. And then you just play uh, with one finger playing all these chords, which is really, really awesome. So uh, that is quarter. I'm gonna move that real quick. And then right next to uh, the quarter button is the ARP effects button. So now when I select the ARP effects button, that's gonna drop in our um, arpeggiator for Studio One. So now, just as any other arpeggiator, I can play a chord, and it's gonna arpeggiate that chord. Um, the knobs also have assignments as well too. They have an assignments in quarter, uh, they also have assignments here on Arpeggiator. So um, the way that you would find those, uh, what they're currently assigned to, you can always change them, but you can come up here in the upper left-hand corner, go to your external devices editor right here, and then whatever plugin is currently in focus, you'll see what the, um, the current assignments are here. So you'll see I have a hold mode here on knob number one. So I'm gonna turn that on. You'll see how hold turned on right up here. Uh, and then I can change the velocity mode to be a fixed velocity, and then I want that to be right around here. So now when I just play, I can change the velocity. If it about right there, I can change the gate, make it shorter or longer, uh, add some uh, swing, or just completely, you know, add a few octave ranges here. Say we wanted to make it, we'll leave it at three. And then I want to change the play mode now to only be up. Come over here to random. Or just change the rate as well too, so we can make it quicker or slower. And then shut hold off. So definitely make use of the um, quarter effects, the ARP effects, and the scales, uh, as well as the melodic uh, pattern editor to, to start creating really quickly. And once again, I'm using a piano sound here, but of course you can use this on any synth, uh, that you'd like to. It's super powerful stuff and allows you to get creative really, really quickly.